everybody. Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Uh, took the weekend and did some other things, but back now, 1st of June 2020. Can't believe we're almost, ha almost halfway through the year. If you're new here, like, subscribe, comment. We try to go daily, and we're going to get more serious about that, uh, with topics about spirituality, topics about life coaching details, topics about psychology and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you like that, like, subscribe, comment below. Today we're going to talk about my version of the four basic love styles. I say my version because I, I have uh, a little bit of divergence <coughs> from the uh, traditional methods of figuring that out. And so there's four basic love styles that I've seen in working with almost 14,000 people. And I'll break them down for you today. We'll, we'll talk about those real quick. So there's the secure love style. That is, you have trust in people. Dr. Wayne Dyer would say um, when he was alive, and if you're not familiar with his work, go on YouTube and, and go online, and there's all sorts of stuff to check out about his work, and there's books and all sorts of great things. But anyway, he, he and I'm paraphrasing, but he would say, do you believe the world is a friendly or a harsh place? And what you believe will be the type of people you attract into your life. And so... For a person with a secure-based love style, you still have hope and optimism that your needs will be met. Um, these are folks who most likely grew up at least with one or two family members that were pretty solid. More than that usually, but at least two people that like, hey, I can always go to grandma or I can always go to Uncle Bob or I can always go to my sister or something like that. You have the belief that if you go forward, and oftentimes there's at least one parent involved in those in those two people or more, but so if you go forward, your needs emotionally will be met. Now these are the these are the lucky I won't say few, but these are the lucky group of folks who probably when they when they deal with someone that's been through a lot of trauma, they have difficulty relating because trauma is something they see in movies, they read about it in books. They deal with it, you know, in an abstract way. They might have friends that have it, but someone who's been through severe trauma, they may go several years or into adulthood before ever dealing with someone who is like that on a daily basis. So the next uh, uh, personality archetype is the, is the love avoidant archetype. And so the idea of that is you've been through enough to know that some people are sketchy. And rather than take the risk on dealing with um, the sketchy people, you tend to avoid getting too close to too many people, and you put people through a proving ground. Uh, you avoid deeper conversations. You avoid anything that could leave you vulnerable until someone has vetted himself and proven himself in situations that are less consequential. So, you know, hey... I said I'd pick up dinner, and I actually didn't. Hey, I said I'd be here on time, and I actually was, you know, at least four out of five times. Hey, I said I'm going to do this. So it's very much the avoidant love style is based on the idea that one is guarded, but that guard can be taken down when a person proves themselves. Um, and this is usually where most people who are, who've been through some heavy stuff, but they've always rebounded. They've had the ability to reword their trauma internally. They've had the ability to be, see the other side of things. So while they were going through hardship, they had somebody on the other side telling them, them there was still hope. And so, um, that leads them to believe in being cautiously optimistic that people can be good, but they still tend to avoid situations that lead to vulnerability. The next one, which is, I think, unique to me calling it this, but I call it the seesaw. So this is where people pleasers, overgivers, and people who are um, have been through pretty significant trauma but they've managed to hold on to shreds of hope. They're glimmers of light. They're not there all the time, but they'll come back if you give them enough space. 
these are people who most likely have been through um, some form of harsh relationship neglect or maybe even an absent parent, um, an absent family or feeling like an outsider in their own family. Um, these are folks who feel that they're performers. I love William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare says, all the world is a stage. And I am a big believer in that philosophy because I see so many people performing, especially in the Western world, to get love, to get acceptance, to get adoration, to get admiration, that the seesaw is the person who might be prone to gossip to survive. They might be prone to be nice to a boss and then grumble behind their back. So there's a little bit of wearing a mask or two-facedness there. Who they really are and who they have to perform to be is often very different. It's almost like they're living, I won't say a double life, that's too far and too dramatic, but they're living, there's a compartmentalized nature. There's the life I live when I'm at work, there's the life I live when I'm at home, there's the life I live when I'm around people with whom I honestly feel I can be vulnerable, and these are all blended together with the core at the same person, but you'll seesaw based on who you're around, you'll seesaw based on, on what's there, and... Um, it's, it's challenging because sooner or later that person becomes exhausted and it's hard to keep up the pace of being different things for different people. The last love or love attachment style, uh, which they usually call trauma-based, but I call it just, and, and I've heard it called chaos other places. So this is where a person is expecting the other shoe to drop. These individuals have been through severe neglect, severe abuse continually. Um, they may have borderline personality disorder. They may have narcissistic personality disorder as a way to cope. They may have complete avoidance or PTSD. There's a very good likelihood, probably 80% plus, that they have some sort of emotional challenge going on and that they can't trust anybody, including but not limited to themselves. These are people that are very hard to get to know because they will change on you on a dime. And many times, a person who lives a chaotic love style, um, they jump from relationship to relationship super quickly, sometimes even as quickly as, and I, I've seen this in, in coaching people. Um, I said to one person probably four or five years ago, I said, how long has it been since you were in your last relationship? And she said, last Tuesday. And I said, okay, well, how long were you with that person? And she said, a month. And it was indicative of that search for love, that search for acceptance, that search for value being so entrenched in the chaos of you're here one minute, go on the next, and I'll go and I'll find somebody else, and I'll do what I need to do, but I don't really trust anybody, but I have to trust in my ability to find happiness, so I'll jump from thing to thing to thing. I actually can think of at least a couple of cases where I would see people, and when I say see, I'm talking not literally, I'm talking figuratively. Um, I would see people that I was working with, and they'd break up with one significant other on Monday and already be scouting for uh, that next person and probably have achieved calling themselves in a relationship by Friday, um, a lot of that having to do with the chaotic nature of, okay, this time is going to be different. I won't get hurt this time. If I just absorb myself in someone else and keep going, I won't have to deal with harm or hurt or the emotional issues of abandonment or fear. That's another thing, too. Chaotic people, people with a chaos love theory or love style are individuals who most likely have severe abandonment and trauma core issue. These are individuals that, until they deal with themselves, may often struggle for extended periods of time with things like substance abuse or negative mood patterns, that type of thing. So it's interesting how love styles can really have a profound impact on how a person sees themselves, on how they see their self-value. And it's important to look at um, you know, those core love styles when looking for a partner, when looking at yourself in relationships, partnership, and all sorts of other things. But until next time... Uh, this has been Scott Golden. Keep your feet on the ground and your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.